Son, and the Holy Spirit. When the priest says a prayer, if we don't say the response of Amen, then it's just empty words. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. All of us who have had children, especially young children, have probably had to utter the phrase, well, if you don't want that done to you, don't do that to him. This often called the silver rule is don't do unto others as you don't want others to do to you. It is essentially a treaty of nonviolence, and we try to get our toddlers to understand it. But the reality is, my beloved brothers and sisters in Christ, this method of teaching is what was given to the world by our Lord and God and Savior. Inasmuch as when we look at the Ten Commandments, what are they saying? Don't do this. Don't do this. Don't do this. Don't kill. Don't steal. Don't covet. Don't have other things. Sociologists look at the Ten Commandments and have declared that for the commandments that are talking about these social goods, it is the barest minimum needed to keep society from destroying itself. After all, if everyone was lying and everyone was killing and everyone was stealing, society could not stand. That is the bare minimum that we need to have a good society. And this term of the silver rule was coined by Roman sophists at or around the time of Christ, in which they were noticing that in order to get people to calm down, they needed to address this and get them to stop being violent to one another, stop robbing one another, stop stealing from one another. But you see, my beloved brothers and sisters in Christ, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ shows us a much more excellent way in today, the second Sunday of Luke, in which he tells us to do unto others as we would have them do unto us. This is the golden rule, as they say better, superior to the silver rule. And yet, under modern sociologists and philosophers, they are looking at this and saying, well, that's not true. After all, how do I know what you want? Isn't it presumptuous of me to give you what I want? I like vanilla ice cream, but maybe you don't like vanilla ice cream. Isn't that presumptuous for me to insist on my way to give to you? But this selfish rendering of this rule completely misses the point. For you see, the silver rule is completely selfish in as much as it is looking at me. I don't want to get robbed. I don't want to get killed. I don't want bad things happening to me, so I'm going to not do those things to you. It is a passive method of living. But Jesus Christ is asking for us to be active in our living, to not just not do bad things, but to do good things, to think what I want. When we look at the philosophical concepts of happiness and ethics, we see that ethics is about trying to find that which is going to make me truly and lastingly happy. Happiness is not found in an ephemeral or temporary thing. A chocolate chip cookie might seem happy for a moment, but then it's gone. If we're looking for real happiness, it means acquiring good things. And so as a Christian, if I want good things, then I need to give good things things. I need to give kindness. I need to give patience. 
I need to give generosity. I need to give love. And Jesus Christ tests us with this. For he says to us, what good is it to you to love those who love you back? Even sinners do that. And what good is it to you to do things for people that are good to you? Even sinners do that. And what good is it for you? What grace, what hari is it to you to lend to those to whom you expect to get as much or more back? Even sinners lend to sinners. But we are called, according to Jesus Christ, to love our enemies. We are called to love them, to be merciful to them like our Father is merciful. How many times, my beloved brothers and sisters in Christ, have you found in your heart or in the heart of someone close to you a spirit of unforgiveness? in which we refuse to forgive our loved one, our neighbor. They took away my honor. I will never forgive them. I will never go up to them. I will never be seen in the same house with them. If they enter a room, I'm going to exit out the other side. And if we have to be together for holiday parties and whatnot, I will not talk to that person. My beloved brothers and sisters in Christ, it happens so very, very often. And Jesus Christ is telling us that is not the way to salvation. We have to be active. If someone has wronged us, it is our duty to be the bigger person. If we want to be called sons of the Most High, if we want to be children of God, if we want to be after the Spirit of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we must seek those people and ask for their forgiveness. We must seek those people and tell them that we forgive them. We must seek those people and do good unto those people, even if they will not do good back. Many times in my life, people have said to me when I'm doing an action or lending something to somebody, why are you doing that? They would not do that for you. That should never enter into the equation of our hearts, my beloved brothers and sisters in Christ. The action of the other person has nothing to do with me. I answer to God. And so, when we have the opportunity to do good, do it. Don't wait. Don't be passive. Be active. Active in your forgiveness. Active in your charity. Active in your love. Don't be passive. Today we celebrate St. Roman